Hello everyone, Ben here. Hope this video finds you doing well and hyped for another incredible summer of whiffs. A lot of leagues have either already started their season or are about to. One league that belongs to that second group would be the most well-recognized wiffle ball league in the world, MLW. Michigan's finest kicks off the 2022 season May 1st with a great matchup between the Wildcats and the Diamondbacks. But there are six other teams in the league that are not far behind, and in today's video we are going to preview all of them. Eight teams, worst to best. That's right boys, today we are doing the official 2022 Wiffle Statement PAL Rankings for MLW. Let's get into it. Coming in last, or first, depending on how you look at it, we have the Metro Magic, captained by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jack Agner. The Magic finished 2021 by getting swept by the Wildcats in the ALCS. If I had to describe the Magic last season with one word, it would be discombobulated. They had multiple players that were inconsistent starters and just didn't seem to have a solid plan of attack week in and week out. Going into this year, if Trevor Bonham can be a consistent starter and Chadwick can replicate last year's pitching performance, the Magic will have some solid bedrock to the team right out the gate. As a captain, Agner is definitely a great leader, but last year slumped at the plate, hitting to a 194 average with 9 RBI and 3 home runs. On the bright side though, he did have a great on base percentage at 479. But that being said, Agner will definitely have to produce more offensively to keep his team in games. Overall, there are a lot of ifs to this team, and while I am excited to watch them compete this year, I mean, come on, it's Swagner Agner, it's going to be a great time no matter what. That being said, I know they're in for an uphill battle with the competition that they'll be facing throughout the year. Next up at number seven, man, this one hurts. We have the Pacific Predators. Thus far, um, uh, what are you, what, how are you feeling? Absolutely terrible. Complete, terrible. Complete self destruction in the second half of the season. Um, I don't know what's going on. We got to figure a lot of stuff out. Mm -hmm. But uh, very subpar. I'm not happy. No one's happy. So we got to change some things, and we'll be back. Back in the day, the Preds were always my favorite team to watch in the league. So much energy, and also big time underdogs in the past. It wasn't until 2017 and 2018 that the team really began putting the pieces together, and that ultimately led them to the 2019 World Series Championship. However, since then, it seems that the team has been rather content to rest on their laurels, and instead of building the dynasty, just kinda sit back and play some whiffs. Last year, they missed the playoffs, finishing at a disappointing 7-8 and eight record. And they started off this year with a more than questionable second round pick in the draft, where instead of going for whiffs experience and raw plastic talent, they went for familiarity, picking up Mac Holly, who has some rapport with Ryan Cratch and Stephen McGlade from baseball. Anyone that's been in this game for long enough will tell you that wiffle ball and baseball are very different animals. And while I'm not saying Mac will be a bust, I am saying he wasn't a second round quality pick compared to the rest of the class. That being said, you know what we can expect out of the Preds. Some sick pitching from Cratch and quality at bats from Warda and Brennan Russell. But compared against the rest of the talent in the league right now, these guys will have to be on fire for the whole season if they are going to carry this team to a playoff appearance. The Cobras enter this season in a similar position to always, not an absolute juggernaut, but still having a lot of potential and if the stars align, could make a pretty deep run. That's why they come in at number six. A big part of that potential would be at the play of Andy Durand. In the three series he played last year, Andy was incredible, hitting to a 412 average with six RBI and a 500 on base percentage. 
If he can play a full season this year with the Snakes, that will definitely bolster the team's offense. Which was led last year by Drew Davis, who, as always, put up solid numbers at the plate and from the rubber. In 2021, Drew hit to the tune of a 312 average with 10 home runs and 22 RBI. He complemented that by pitching to a 2.79 ERA, over 29 innings, getting 6 wins, and striking out 66 batters. That being said, if you've been watching the league for long enough, it's no secret that the Cobras will go as Drew Davis goes. However, this year I expect him to get a lot of help from Brennan Baranowski. Although he was pretty mediocre for the team in 2021, this year, I think he will step into a much bigger role for the squad. Brendan seems to really be coming into his own as a whiffs player, and that was shown by his great pitching performance at the 2021 United Wiffleball National Championship Tournament last October. If he can continue that hot streak over into this year and give Drew some spectacular relief pitching, these guys could be a great one-two punch. Plus, if they can get some help from their draft pickup, Sawyer Bean, the Cobras can have a pretty deep roster, but it all comes down to how, as a group, they will produce over the course of a season, as opposed to leaning on just one or two guys. Fun fact, the Monsters and Men is my favorite band. Let's go, 10! Sorry, I'm not supposed to scream, apparently. Come on, 10! Next up, at our number 5 spot, we have the league staple, Eastern Eagles. The Eagles suffered a tough sweep at the hands of the Gators in the 2021 NLDS, but are entering 2022 toting a great draft pick with Landon Urgaitis. Landon has experience in multiple MLW tournaments and has a strong arsenal of pitches. While it remains to be seen how he will perform this year, playing a full season in the league, I think moving forward into future years, Landon has the potential to be a great core arm for this Eagles team. Two guys we know fans will be excited to see will be Daniel Schultz, of course, and then Dallas Allen. Dallas had a more than respectable season last year, batting to a 290 average with three home runs and five RBI. While his pitching numbers were not that impressive, he did do the job of giving Daniel relief and picked up two wins in the process. I'm sure Daniel will be hoping for him to repeat that performance, as well as getting help from Zach Whalen, who showed last year that he is still a respectable guy at the dish. However, besides these guys, I kind of see 2022 as being a soft rebuild for the Eagles, or at least a year to find fresh footing. Longtime franchise player Clayton Price has been in a massive decline lately, and Neil Smith really fell off last year, hitting to a below 200 average. That being said, the Eagles have a lot of growing talent to work with, and while this year might have some growing pains that go along with it, there are definitely good times ahead. Entering the second half of the list, we have last year's runner-up, the Western Wildcats. Starting off, I think if you're talking league duos, Nick Saylor and Kyle Schultz are unquestionably the best one-two in MLW. As you can see from this stack comparison, both of these guys complement each other very well and are really talented from the rubber and at the dish, putting up incredibly impressive numbers. At the same time, Jackson Pearson proved himself to be a capable batter last year, and if he can leverage that experience into 2022, the Wildcats will have a great core batting lineup. However, one of the most exciting parts of the team to watch out for this year will be Ty Smith, the team's big pickup in the draft. Ty comes into MLW with more than four years of competitive whiffs experience, and after showing he can defeat MLW players at one of their own tournaments, I think Ty will make his presence felt in the league very quickly. In my opinion, Kyle has once again done a great job of putting together a great core for his Wildcats, and after sniffing a championship in 2020 and 2021, this year might just be the one where he can add another trophy to the mantle. However, in saying that, there are going to be three vicious opponents in his way. At number three, we have the Midwest Mallards. I made a video last week doing a deep breakdown on the Mallards 2022 draft selection with Jordan Robles, 
So I won't get too deep into that here, but if you would like to watch that full video, it will be linked at the end of this video so you can check it out. But to put it simply, Jordan is an absolute game changer for this franchise. The guy simply wins everywhere he goes. Upon his first series in MLW, he will be the most experienced player in the league with over 10 years of competitive whiffs experience. Jordan is going to provide an absolute spark to this team that is going to be hard for the competition to slow down. If Tommy Coughlin can continue his hot bat from last year, where he hit 250 with 14 RBI and 4 home runs, the Mallards will be in a good spot. Plus, they also picked up Ben Wilson from the Diamondbacks, who can be a valuable batting asset along with Cade Irwin. While there might be some doubters for the Mallards going into this season, and a lot of questions as the season gets rolling, I am very confident that Tommy is ready to write a new chapter in the Mallard story, and I think he definitely has the players to do just that. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Great Lakes Gators. The Gators are a team that sticks together as shown by their tight three-man core of Chris Cheatham, Brendan Jorgensen, and Brendan Zerlag. However, entering the fold this year will be Reese Harris, a Midwest guy with whiffs experience in NWA, while also being a college baseball player. Just from the scouting report, I like Reese a lot, and I'm sure the Gators must see something in him to add him to this squad. Going back to our main team core, really, all these guys have to do is stay on track from last year, and they'll be pretty set. Last year, the Gators had a combined team average of 231 with 14 home runs and 59 RBI. Pitching-wise, Cheatham and Jorgensen, while not being the most elite arms in the league, are definitely great at grinding out wins over the course of the season. They will have to do that again this year, and I think Reese will play a huge role in improving the squad from last season. But at the end of the day, this is still the same championship team that dominated in 2020 and shocked the league by winning the World Series. And I think they are definitely capable of doing that again and more than worthy of our number two spot. By process of elimination, you already know who my number one pick is, and maybe to no surprise, it is the defending champs, the Diamondbacks. In my mind, the Diamondbacks are the current king of the hill, and team to beat in MLW. Jimmy Norp has slowly been turning this franchise into a future dynasty, and I think this year, he aims to cement that legacy for years to come. In 2022, the Diamondbacks are bringing back the familiar faces of Jonah Heath, Jimmy Norp, and Michael Shima. I've been singing Norp's praises this offseason on how great of a year he had in 2022, but let's not forget that the guys with him were spectacular as well in getting the team to that 11-4 record and the championship, particularly Jonah Heath, who was a great second arm for the team, getting four wins with a 1.80 ERA and a 1.80 whip. As far as new faces, I'm very excited to see Trey Flood. This kid is young but has great potential to be an electric pitcher and can add a lot of depth to this rotation. Also, energy-wise, I think he's a great match for the team. Another great match for the team should be Casey Bennett, another draft pickup who has experience in MLW tournaments. He seems like a solid utility player who, similar to Trey, has the right energy to fit chemistry-wise with the Diamondbacks. At the end of the day, the defending champs enter 2022 even better than they were last year. And like I said at the beginning of this segment, they are the team to beat. And until that happens, I am proud to put them at number one in the 2022 Wiffle Statement preseason power rankings for MLW. Whew. There you have it, boys. Hope you guys enjoyed the Wiffle Statement MLW Power Rankings before we get into the 2022 season. As always, this is just one man's opinion, and yours could very well be different from mine. So please drop a comment down below agreeing or disagreeing and telling me your list. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and want more top-tier content covering whiffs from across the country, 
please drop a like and subscribe for new videos every Friday afternoon. You can also follow me on Twitter at WiffleStatement, where I am very active and plan to be the rest of the year. All that and a lot of other cool stuff is linked down below in the description, so be sure to go ahead and check it out. And I'm going to wrap up here, boys. Get out there and play some whiffs, and if you can't, well, watch some whiffs instead and get ready for the 2022 MLW opening day on May 1st. Enjoy that, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Goodbye.